everything you need to know about inside Xbox, Call of Duty Warzone might be connecting future Call of Duty games and is Cyberpunk coming to Xbox Game Pass at launch? Even though Assassin's Creed Valhalla didn't deliver from its gameplay trailer and is heavily disliked right now, there were some really cool games that Inside Xbox did provide and so much more news coming right up in this episode of Top Gaming News. Inside Xbox was a presentation where it showed for the first time some Xbox Series X gameplay. And not only that, it also premiered some really cool games. But unfortunately, by the end of it, the whole stream was disliked heavily because of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. But if you can take Assassin's Creed out of the box, we can still talk about some really cool, awesome games that came out from that stream. And one of them is called Scorn. Now, this game is heavily inspired from H.R. Geiger's artwork, which you must have seen from Alien Xenomorph, from those Alien movies, and also from Alien Isolation. So it's all about intense looking environment and some gooey little stuff hanging around. The game had a successful Kickstarter two years back and now they're focused more to make sure that this game turns out to be an adventure horror game. Now the Kickstarter also had a gameplay demo that showed around how the game looks like and it was not at all polished so it looks like maybe later down in the future they will polish this game and make it even more scary. The trailer that they premiered showcased more of what Geiger's art form would look like. So crazy monstrosity of a hallway, some gooey little stuff hanging around, ribbed like tubes so much more, it looks all nasty. The moment this trailer launched, I thought this is Alien Isolation 2 because it looks so much similar to those Alien movies. But then I realized that Alien Isolation is made from a different company altogether. I still hope for Alien Isolation 2. Is that weird? But what do you think about this game? Let me know in the comments below because this looks absolutely scary and ridiculous. But there was another game that looks even more scary and it's called The Medium who is made by the same guys who made Layers of Fear and not only that, the music of this game is composed by the same guys who have composed music for Silent Hill 2. Now the visuals of this game are really good and also the good thing is that they showed some snippets of gameplay in the trailer. Usually when a new game is announced, they show one trailer which doesn't show at all related to gameplay but this time they did showcase some form of gameplay which I am really happy about. The CEO of Bluebird says that this game is about perspective and perception. When you change your point of view, you discover that things are even more complicated. And he also says that this is the most ambitious game that they have ever worked in and they are making sure that they turn this game into a psychological horror game. Now the character in this game has a connection to the living world and the spirit world which is very much similar to that of Silent Hill 2 as well as that of Silent Hill movie which I shouldn't have referenced because it is not a good movie. But I'm really excited that it is very much similar to that of Silent Hill 2 and those Silent Hill games and it is a horror game which Bloober Games are doing a very well job ever since Layers of Fear. Now those two are really cool horror game but there was another cool game that I'm really excited to see how it goes and that is Bright Memory Infinite. Now this game is a mixture of shooting and sword fighting and so much more. Now apparently there is already a game called Bright Memory available in Steam right now and it's like a 30 minutes demo for Bright Memory Infinite. At least it looks like a 30 minutes demo. And it also has good reviews and it doesn't cost that much. So if you want to take a look at how Bright Memory looks like, go ahead and play it right now. It's available on Steam. From the trailer, the game looks visually amazing. But only time will tell if they will be able to keep that momentum up ever since they showed that trailer. It reminds me of the time when Crisis 1 came out with the trailer. It looks absolutely gorgeous and I'm getting a similar kind of vibe from a Bright Memory Infinite Trailer and I hope, I hope that this game does perform good when it comes out. Now since we got inside Xbox out of the box, if you know what I mean, let's talk about some other news such as Cyberpunk 2077 might be coming to Xbox Game Pass. Or is it? Now where did this info came from? Now apparently Xbox Portugal account has posted a tweet saying that the game is coming out in Xbox Game Pass at launch and then the tweet was deleted and then they posted a apology tweet about sharing the wrong info. Now this is so odd to see a Portugal Xbox Twitter account posting a false information about the most anticipated game of this very year. Now later on they said that they were actually going to talk about Xbox One Special Edition for this game instead of talking about Game Pass and they have no other information about Xbox Game Pass as of this very moment. Now even CD Projekt Red has told that it is a miscommunication and not a true statement and they don't know anything about Game Pass at this very moment. Now think about it, if this game comes out in Xbox Game Pass then it's great for us but it won't be great for them because the sales and revenue, the amount that they will create will be very less which is not what they want obviously. 
Now recently CD Projekt Red has also posted that what new feature Cyberpunk will have and that is customizing your own character. And it's not like you're designing the face structure of your character or how your character will dress up. It's actually the whole body of your character. So now you can customize your own genital area, your chest area and uh, basically everything in your body. A deep dive into customization of your own body. I like it. The game is also rated M because the game has some mutilated corpses, open chest cavities, some nudity while you create your own character. So definitely not for kids. Well, what would you like to see happen in Cyberpunk 2077? Let me know in the comments below. What I want is more of Keanu Reeves. I want him first. Now let's talk about Call of Duty Warzone because as everybody knows Warzone is one of the most biggest battle royale games of all time. First of all it's Call of Duty and second it's a free to play game. So definitely everybody would just rush into this game to play some Call of Duty. Although the game is not being playable by a lot of people and has its launch issues and whatnot, but still the game is performing really well and it looks like it's going to continue in the future. Now Call of Duty has plans to make even more games. It has been rumored that it is Black Ops or some kind of a reboot. And even though Warzone was a small spin-off of Modern Warfare using its own guns, its own environment, its own setting, the question is, if a new Call of Duty game comes around, will Warzone adapt to that change? Infinity Ward's narrative director has told that Call of Duty is a genre in itself and there are different branches in Call of Duty 3, but they are all connected in some ways. Warzone will be a through line that will connect different sub-franchises of Call of Duty. Now this probably means when a new Call of Duty game comes around, Warzone will adapt to that Call of Duty game meaning it will have same guns, maybe same environment, same setting and will also have the setting that the game already had, mix them all together and I think it's a great move if that's actually happening. Because in this way, people who want to play Call of Duty but don't have enough money can actually play Warzone for free and get all the features that the new Call of Duty game has. The more I talk about it, the more I think it's a great move. Now as of Warzone, it has been told that duos will be added to Battle Royale because it was there in Plunder. More interestingly is how players are finding clues and mysteries in Verdansk portion of the map in Warzone and it looks like Season 4 will answer some of those hidden secrets and mysteries and that is how it's going to shape Warzone in the coming next seasons. Now this is similar to that of PUBG as they are making some kind of a storyline as they release new seasons and new maps every season. Now with games like these, it's necessary to do something different. Like Fortnite is having these concerts or Apex is having stories for different characters that they can connect with the players. Now what will Call of Duty do in this instance? That remains to be seen but I believe it's gonna be good. Well, we got some really big news from EA. It looks like EA is actually bringing 14 different games in the next fiscal year of EA that goes until March 2021. Now, four of them are confirmed, which will be sports game. So it will be FIFA, Madden, NHL and some other game. Wait a minute, will that other game be cricket? But one thing that they will be making is an HD title of a EA game. And it has been rumored that that game is Mass Effect Trilogy. Now what do you do for Mass Effect after a tragic loss from Mass Effect Andromeda? You make a new game or you just remaster your old games. That works too. Now this news is not confirmed by EA that the HD title is indeed a Mass Effect trilogy but it could be very much possible that it is the case. Back in 2019 news surfaced that EA is actually working on a new Mass Effect game and I think having an HD remaster of the older games would remind everybody about the Mass Effect the OG trilogy so that they can come back to this new Mass Effect game when they make it right. Important, they should make it right. Do you still have hopes for Mass Effect? I for one stand for second chances. So I'm giving Mass Effect a second chance and hoping that they do deliver it this time around. Let me know all of that in the comments below. Now there is one franchise that has made us happy with its sequel. That is Doom Eternal. And it seems like Doom Eternal is gonna have two new DLC for its story as they release it officially on Twitter with a couple of screenshots. Now these are not real screenshots, it looks like at least, because these look more like of an art of that very level. So it looks like you will be running around with your guns and gunning those monsters out. One thing that is concerning is the background score for these DLCs because apparently it looks like the relationship between ID Software and Mick Gordon, the guy who made this heavy metal action packed soundtrack for Doom are not working well together and it seems like he won't be working for Doom Eternal DLC. If Doom doesn't have this sick metal action packed music, how will you feel good when you be the Doom guy? 
Apparently, Mick Gordon was not able to complete the OST for Doom Eternal in time and he wanted more time and he was given more time until April. But when April came by, the company had some concerns and that's why the lead audio designer of ID Software then used the music that Mick Gordon created and made a mix by himself. And that somehow created a series of issues and in the end it was decided that Mick Gordon won't be working for the DLCs of Doom Eternal. Now I believe that ID Software must have something to work on to make these DLC music score possible. But it's just heartbreaking to see that Mick won't be working on the DLC for Doom Eternal and making those awesome soundtrack that he always does. Well that is everything I had to cover for this episode of Top Gaming News. Thank you so much guys for watching this episode. Make sure to hit that like button and click on subscribe to watch some more awesome videos in Gamer Connect. Make sure to follow us on all social media platforms and also join Gamer Connect community on Facebook to take part in various activities, tournaments and so much more. My name is Gimin Madness and I'll see you guys in the next video.